Greetings, welcome back to the Too Fast Tactical channel. In today's video, we're going to be doing an unboxing and a review of a cell phone gimbal. Now, when I'm making videos, or if I'm at the range, or if I'm at a car show, I don't normally bring my Panasonic G7. My G7 is what I use when I'm at home in this area at my video station making videos. When I'm out and about, I normally use my cell phone for making videos. This three-axis gimbal here is designed specifically to hold a cell phone and stabilize it while you're making videos. So that is a really great feature, especially if you own a cell phone that doesn't have any type of internal stabilization. This particular gimbal here is made by uh, Neewer. I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly, or N-E-E-W-E-R. Uh, it is available from Amazon. Uh, it carries a standard price on Amazon of $79. I'm going to put a coupon code in the description. So if you use the coupon code, you should be able to get it for $62.99. That's a, that's a really great price for uh, a, a gimbal such as this. You know, just a few years ago, gimbals were two, three, four hundred dollars. And now that more manufacturers have gotten into uh, that particular market segment, uh, the price has come down substantially. And you're seeing more and more improvements on these gimbals. So now it's very affordable to pick one of these up, put it in your camera bag or, or you know, whatever you use to carry your, your video equipment in, and you've always got it with you. So uh, before I get into the specs, let's uh, let's just go ahead and take a look at the packaging and get it unboxed, and then I'll discuss some of the specs. And I'll try to keep that as short as possible. But what what I'm going to do is we're gonna we're gonna go through uh, testing the gimbal to a certain point, and I'm going to show you the features. And Neewer also has a uh, uh, an Android and an iPhone app that you can download for your phone. And I'll show you how to do that because I think it's a really great addition. So uh, the S5B gimbal ships in this packaging right here. Um, it's the standard of POP packaging. It's basically a box and it, it's, it's got some uh, descriptive information on the side. We've got some specs here. Of course these specs are in, in grams. Well, not all of them. The weight uh, and so on uh, and of course the uh, there's a QR code down here this is also in the user manual and you can take your cell phone and you can scan this and, and we'll do that and it will take you to the uh, the App Store or the Google Play Store where you can download the app for your phone so it works pretty good and that's you know suitable for packaging here on this box let's get this open So the, um, it ships in this plastic molded tray and you have your user manual and this is customer support information in several different languages. There's a foam protective cover piece on the top and this is what's basically inside. Now there is no carry case for this. So if you're going to carry this, you're going to have to figure out, you know, how you're going to store this. If you've got a camera bag that's big enough or if you want to keep it in this uh, packaging and carry it that way. Uh, I'm not sure how I'm going to carry this. I don't really want to carry the box around. And it's actually too big to fit in my camera bag. I was hoping uh, to find, uh, I'm going to have to, I um, hope to find some sort of a, a carry bag for this. But I haven't gotten that far um, yet. Um... You've got a uh, lanyard and you've got a charging cable, which is a uh, USB-C and standard USB charging cable. Um, this has a lithium ion battery inside. It is rechargeable. Uh, you can use this cable to connect to your computer to recharge it. Uh, if you want to plug it into the wall or a cigarette lighter adapter, you need one that can accept this larger uh, USB plug, you know, like uh, your Apple uh, cell phone charger um, or something of that nature. I plugged this the uh, first time I charged it I plugged it into my computer 
and uh, charge it up and it charged just fine. So, let's get the packing material out of the way for the moment. All right, so uh, when I initially um, took this out and unpackaged it, you know, it's, it's pretty much an all plastic design. Uh, there is some uh, rubberized material right here and right here, and that's to aid in gripping because this is your main gripping surface right here. And it's not textured or anything. Um, this hole down here is, is uh, sufficiently sized so you can um, put the lanyard through there if you want to use the lanyard. Uh, on the bottom, you have your standard quarter inch tripod mount. Uh, for this on the back uh, you have a shutter switch and you have a USB port here and a USB port here uh, this USB port with the cover on it in the back this allows you to connect a USB cable up to your cell phone to charge your cell phone from this internal lithium-ion battery if you're going to charge this unit you use the unprotected USB-C port right here on the side the uh, front controls, um, you have uh, this dial for zoom. There's a power button right there. And then you have uh, this toggle wheel up here for selecting different functions. And then you've got a myriad of different lights here uh, to tell you what's going on with the gimbal itself. Um, these three on this side can tell you what mode this gimbal is in. I'll talk about that soon. Uh, the blinking light on the top here is for Bluetooth. And these three lights over here let you know the charge state of the battery. And I'll talk about that because i got to whip that information out of the manual or my notes so I make sure I tell you correctly. Um, this is a, uh, got quite a bit of adjustability on it. You can see there's a knob right here. Uh, there's a knob here. The... Uh, um, this knob right here, you can adjust the pitch and you can adjust the roll right here. And this is also an, another adjustment knob that allows you to adjust for different sized cell phones. Now, right out of the box, when I put uh, my iPhone 6S in this and powered it up, it was perfectly balanced. So I, had, I didn't have to tweak anything. But if you have a larger phone, you may insert it in here and power it on and it, it may not level out so you may need to loosen up and make some adjustments the manufacturer states that this is suitable for up to a six inch phone i have an iphone 6s so that's actually a lot smaller the phone is held in place via this bracketing system right here now there is foam material on the back and there's foam material on the sides so Putting your phone in here uh, with this material, you're not going to mar the surface of your cell phone. And the cell phone needs to be slid all the way down into this slot, um, which is also kind of rubberized uh, to protect your phone. Um, I've noticed that you're probably not going to be able to fit your phone in here and get it situated correctly with a case on it. I happen to have a very thin case and I can get it in here. It's not ideal, but it, it will work if you have a really thin case. If you've got a thicker style case or one of those shockproof type of cases, you're probably going to have to take the phone out to fit it in here. So let me, uh, let me go ahead and reposition the camera and I'll show you how we ins insert our phone into this. All right, so um, this is a this is my iPhone 6s. Yes, I do have an older iPhone. It's got a very thin um, uh, case on it, so I can actually insert this with uh, with the case on it. Uh, normally, I would put this in my lap. I'll try to do this on screen so you can see the installation process. You can see that this is spring loaded here, and you've got a kind of this is how I kind of want to do it. I want to spread it apart. And get my phone inserted and then release it so you can see I slid the phone all the way down so it's in contact with that point and you can see that the majority of the phone is 
held in place. It's pretty solid. Um, ideal, if I was going to be walking around outside, I'd probably take the cell phone case off just to make sure it's it sits down a little bit more. I wouldn't want it to fall out if I tripped over something. So that's basically uh, how you get the phone in the gimbal. And of course, I'm going to reposition the camera again so uh, before I power this up. So let's do that. All right, with uh, uh, you can see this is just gonna basically just kind of kind of flop around a little bit depending upon your phone like you can see with this phone this is pretty balanced but if you had a really heavy one that was hanging out further here it would probably flop down like that and we'll just press the center button hold it for a few seconds and you can see this assembly moves and uh, it levels out now if, if after you power this up if it still doesn't level out if it's tilting down then you've got to go back in and you've got to make some adjustments on those knobs that I mentioned so that's basically um, uh, how we power this up and you can you can basically see the purpose of this gimbal you see how I move this around and it keeps the phone level if you've ever watched uh, any YouTube videos where somebody's walking around with their camera and it's bouncing up and down as they walk, this is the sell point for something like this. This is to stabilize your picture as you're moving about or trying to follow a moving object. Uh, and it, it basically keeps your camera level. So you've got nice smooth transitions as you're moving from point to point. And, you know, you don't have to be a professional filmmaker to make use of something like this. If you're doing uh, vlogs or you know your your content creator you know you could you can definitely use something like this you can put this on a tripod and use the face tracking uh, feature of this which I'll talk about soon and, and uh, use it for for a multitude of different purposes so anyway that's that's how you get the phone installed in the gimbal and that's how you power up the gimbal and that's kind of what the gimbal gimbal does um, let's let's talk about next let's talk about the app now you can use this with your your built-in phone app but I think it's it's gonna benefit you to use newer's newer's uh, app that they have available because uh, it, it provides a lot of functionality so let's let's move on and, and we'll uh, I'll show you how to get that uh, downloaded and installed Okay, so you can uh, either, the uh, first step in this process is uh, uh, with whatever cell phone you're using, what you, should, um, what you should have installed is a QR reader. That's a program specifically designed to read those little codes I showed you on the box. Um, for the purposes of this demonstration, we'll, there's a QR code in the user guide, which I will use. So in case you don't know what the QR codes are, that's you, you see these on a lot of products nowadays. This little kind of a squiggly box design here. And basically this is a, a coded box that a specific program can read. And it will take you, normally it takes you to a specific website or directly to a file for download. So that's what we're going to use for this. Um, I can't speak for all cell phones, but uh, my particular cell phone running iOS didn't have a built-in QR reader. If it does, it's buried somewhere and I don't know anything about it. So uh, I went out to the uh, Apple store and uh, found a free QR reader and installed it. And it's pretty simple to use. You basically just load it up and you center the QR code in front of the box and it will scan it and take you to wherever you need to go. So we'll just do that and boom, it takes me uh, to this particular website here. Hopefully you can see this without too much glare. Uh, Gimbal Pro for Android and iOS and you can basically just download it right from here. Uh, I'm not going to do that because I've already got it downloaded, but that's that's your process for doing that. Um, once you once you get it downloaded, you're going to end up with a uh, icon on your phone somewhere, uh, and it's called uh, Gimbal Gimbal Pro right there. So that's um, 
that's basically how we get the uh, software installed and it connects um, uh, you connect your phone to your gimbal via Bluetooth and we'll cover that I'm gonna take the gimbal out and put the phone back in it and we're, I'm gonna show you how we connect um, your iPhone to the gimbal via Bluetooth okay I've got the uh, phone back in the gimbal I've got the gimbal turned on and we've installed the uh, gimbal pro software so uh, first off you want to make sure that you have location services turned on on your phone uh, and Bluetooth turned on as well and then let's load the gimbal pro software and it's gonna come up and it's gonna it's um, if you have your gimbal on you'll see the uh, Bluetooth sorry this is in uh, vertical mode it doesn't scale for horizontal uh, it'll show the device right here it's called stabilizer underscore something something um, and if we click on that we should make a connection and then the gimbal software will load uh, like so now the uh, um, let's make sure that this is working as it should, which I do believe it is. You can see the uh, this uh, toggle right down here allows you to pan pan your pan the camera. I don't think I demonstrated that earlier in the video, but that's uh, the function of that particular button. So you can see when uh, we've got um, uh, this loaded here, uh, hopefully you can see this, um, you've got uh, some pretty good functionality here. That I'll just go through these features here real quick. Um, that's the settings and allows you to go into gimbal and you've got uh, uh, rapid configuration, joystick, control direction, left and right reverse, and upside down. So you've got uh, horizontal speed as well, vertical speed, uh, fine tune the level. So you got a calibration mode, and then IMU calibration as well. That's underneath gimbal. Let's come back. General is just uh, version, device name, and so on. Uh, if we step up to the option right here, this allows us to select our, hopefully you can see that all right. I need to be able to see it as well. Um, this, uh, this gives you the ability to select if you want the camera to follow only horizontal or you can lock it so it doesn't move at all or follow uh, everything. The mode, the mode, the mode it went away. There we go. Um, your mode, you can specify two modes, walking or sport. Sport would be if you were running or uh, trying to follow a fast moving object, maybe a race car or racetrack or something like that. Um, my purposes, I, I normally go with walking and I believe there's a little blue check mark right there, which I can't see because the lights are blinding me. Anyway, so, um, that's how you select your mode. Uh, the next option up here on the software is, uh, you can go through like right now we're seeing photo resolution here at the top and you can see you've got um, four yeah so 1280 by 720 1920 by 1080 uh, 2840 by 2160 and 40 96 by 2304 uh, I believe that's correct I, the lights shine in here right in my face uh, that's photo resolution and because uh, it, it comes up in default in photo mode over here in this corner right here is how we select from photo to video so if I see if I can get this to uh, there we go 
So if we swap over to video mode and we go back over to our settings there, now you'll see that it says uh, video resolution right there. So we can go in and we can set our video resolution. So we can do 720, uh, 30 frames per second, 1080p, 30 frames per second. We can do 1080p, 60 frames per second, or we can do 4K, 30 frames per second. So that's um, where we, uh, we end up with this particular application on, on, on what we can do here. So um, I'm going to go ahead and select um, 1080p, 30 frames per second, and there's a reason behind that. Um, we'll close out of that and just go back in there. So um, you've got flash, uh, that turns the flash on and off. You've got beauty mode, um, those allow you to select some filters. Sorry if my finger keeps in the way there. Uh, you've got a grid, so you can apply a grid to the screen if you, you're real particular and you want to use a, a grid. You can adjust the white balance, you can turn HDR on and off, you can select manual mode, and uh, that's, that's pretty much uh, all of those particular features underneath that option right there. And up here, that uh, just basically goes back to uh, um, our application and we can just say enter camera and go back to that uh, over here on this other side here um, well let's talk about this option right here this little floating uh, button right here this allows you to select uh, face tracking or object tracking uh, I haven't talked about that feature yet but uh, this gimbal does allow you to do object tracking and face tracking now, um, if we do this, we just turned on object tracking. Object tracking and face tracking does not work if you have the video set to 1080p, 60 frames per second, or 4K, 30 frames per second. The highest level it will work in is 1080p, 30 frames per second. So the, the object tracking, uh, if I can demonstrate this, without knocking everything over. Um, what you would normally do is put it in object tracking mode and, and let's see if we can do this. This is going to be problematic. Um, we want to... Um, Alright. Give me just a second here and uh, we'll see if we can demonstrate this. Okay. Um, I've put the gimbal on a small tripod on my video bench here uh, so it doesn't tilt over while I try to do this. Uh, I've got to get an object in the frame and then I've got to use my finger to draw a small tracking box on it like so and you can see how the gimbal tracks the object as I move the object the gimbal moves so that's basically how you do object tracking and of course if the object gets out of the frame it will lose the tracking capability so um, you want to make sure that whatever you're tracking doesn't move too fast out of frame so that's the uh, object tracking capabilities of the menu uh, face tracking works very similar I can't really demonstrate that I mean I'm having a tough time just demonstrating the object tracking <laughs> Um, let's continue with the features of this. Um, that particular option just pulls up your gallery and if you make a video, your video ends up in this gallery. You've actually got to save the video um, and then it will end up in your photos gallery on your phone. So it's actually stored in a separate location. Go in here, save it, and then you can go into your regular photos area and, and grab the photos or grab the video and upload it to iCloud or delete it or, or what have you. Um, this particular option switches to the front facing camera and up here. Um, 
of course this is kind of washed out how about that uh, you can see that we can do single we can do panorama and uh, you've got uh, time lapse and, and so on so that's that's where that functionality comes in um, on the uh, on the back of the camera the shutter switch I showed you um, on for video it doesn't really do anything if we switched back over to uh, um, video I believe it's yeah it's a recording so let me rephrase what I just said um, the shutter switch on photo mode snaps a photo in video mode when you press the uh, shutter it starts a video and stops a video so that uh, is very convenient you don't have to fuss around with trying to press record buttons or press your other buttons up top or anything like that you can do all of your controls without taking your hand off of the gimbal so that's uh, that's that's pretty slick right there um, let me reposition this real quick okay uh, so that um, that that covers the functionality of the software, how we install the phone into the gimbal and the purpose of the gimbal. Um, let me talk a little bit about some of the specs here. Um, I mentioned that the charging um, uh, you can plug it into a computer, or if you have an adapter, you can plug the cable into adapter and plug it into the wall, or you can plug it into adapter into the car. You can also use a portable power bank and plug it into the USB port. So uh, while you're using it, you've, you're, you're charging it. Now, I'm not exactly sure how you would carry that. There's no clips or facilities to, to attach a power bank to this. There's no brackets or anything, but th that, isn't, that is an option. Um, the charge time is listed as five hours to charge this. Um, but I don't know if that's listed as being charged into the wall or into the computer. I can tell you that uh, when I charged this in the computer, it took a lot longer than five hours. The internal battery um, is a lithium ion battery. It's a 3000 milliamp battery. It has a 12 hour run time. The, uh, let's see. Uh, one of the other things I I didn't I don't think I mentioned was um, this uh, rotation wheel down here. There, there we go. You can see the ro rotation wheel allows you to zoom in and zoom out. Although you can't really see me zooming in or zooming out on anything because it's a completely white background. But that's the uh, purpose of the uh, dial, um, the uh, rotation dial. Uh, supposedly the load capacity is between 2.65 and 8.11 ounces. So check the weight of your phone to make sure it falls within that range. If it's uh, larger than that, you may not be able to get it successfully uh, balanced on the gimbal uh, also you can see I'm running in horizontal mode you can also go vertical if you so desire um, uh, going back to the specs the height on the gimbal is 10.6 inches the weight is 16.23 ounces the tilt range is 325 degrees it's minus 160 to plus 160 degrees roll range is 180 degrees pan range 330 degrees uh, the adjustable range of the phone clip is 53 to 80 millimeters. Uh, they state a 6 inch or below phone. Um, there's a one year warranty on this. And the uh okay that's uh there, there's all my readable specs right there um now i've been using this a little bit and at the end of this video i'm going to post two sample videos i shot with my cell phone one with me just walking and one with me using the gimbal um so far um i the the only thing i could say is is about this 
is I wish it had a carry case. That's the only thing I can say. Um, it it works um, exactly like it's advertised to work. I, I didn't have any problems setting it up, um, charging it, or, or anything else. I think the build quality is great, especially at this price point. It's a sub-$100 gimbal. Uh, it is pr primarily an all-plastic design. Uh, probably wouldn't survive if you dropped it on the concrete. Something would probably break. Uh, but other than that, I've been using this for about a week now. Uh, it's been working great. Happy, happy with everything on it. Although I am a bit confused why the cell phone app will not allow you to do face tracking or app tracking at 1080p 60 frames per second or 4K at 30 frames per second. So, um, that's, uh, kind of disappointing um, uh, but the case and that are really my only two um, issues I think that that could be improved upon with this everything else at this price point is really good so um, again that's the s5b three axis gimbal stabilizer by Neewer. In case we didn't in case I'm saying that's wrong it's n-e-e-w-e-r Neewer newer whatever um, great item for the money um, I'm, I'm glad it's added to my arsenal of uh, video equipment anyway I'm gonna wrap this up and uh, uh, don't click off a video just yet you know watch the two sample videos each sample video is about 60 second long so you kinda get an idea of, of walking with just a phone and walking using the gimbal thanks for watching This video is just going to uh, demonstrate cell phone video recording, holding the camera as still as possible, and just walking. For this video, I have the cell phone in the gimbal and I'm doing the uh, same walk that I did in the previous video.